180! If the lady wants a baby, I'm the cock of the law. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> 180! Who says this is a game just for mentally challenged, toothless alcoholics? an early Cliff Lazarenko and he knocked Keith Deller out of the world match play in 1984. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying to write a speech that I've got to make in less than 72 hours to about a thousand people. But hey, never mind all that. Tell me some more about this Cliff Lazarenko. In 1976... <laughs> Listen! It's not just any speech I've been asked to do. It's the Employment and Recruitment Federation's biannual trade conference. Oh, say it again, you dirty bitch. <laughs> joking, there's going to be loads of important contacts there. Get this right, I could clean up. <laughs> We're not getting too technical for you, are we? <laughs> Come in the kitchen, I'll explain what cleaning up means. Yeah, not going out, not staying in, just hanging around with my head in a spin, but that is no need to scream and shout We're not going out We are not going out Sorry Ladies and gentlemen When most people hear the phrase recruitment consultant Do you know what they think of? Black clouds <laughs> Dark foggy nights in a graveyard Dead puppies <laughs> EastEnders <laughs> Faceless Mr. X on the end of the phone, promising to find Mr. Y, but actually delivering Mr. Z. Have you been eating my alphabetic spaghetti? <laughs> I see the Daleks finally met their match. <laughs> Toilet's blocked. Why can't you do it? I'm a cleaner, not a plumber. I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> you, a lover. You, a cleaner. I wonder who's going to end up doing it. The same person who does everything else. The speech writing, bill paying, telephone answering, muggins. I wonder who'd been doing all those muggins. <laughs> Roll on tomorrow. Why, what's happening? I've got a new PA joining me, Leslie. Oh, hello. It's a bloke. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> ah, talk of the devil. Hello, I was just talking about you. You're such a cheeky little boy, Leslie. I'm going to have to put you over my knee. You have to be much stricter than that with cheeky little boys. <laughs> Try punching him in the face. What? You can't do that to me. Oh, dear. Now what's he suggesting? I don't care if you have found another position. Oh, I know which one he means. <laughs> Tell him you've always found it unhygienic. You cannot pull out on me like that. Make your mind up, love. He's got another job. I'm never going to get this speech written. Oh, God, I want to kill myself. Oh, that's an awful thing to say. I had none to kill to self. Sorry. That's OK, I never met her. Well, there goes my theory. <laughs> you missed your chance there, didn't you? Lucy Stress needs a PA. 70% of marriages start with an office romance, you know. My first love was a work colleague. Yeah, what was his name? Mr Sheen. <laughs> Close. It was Barry. <laughs> Do you get it? Barry Sheen. <laughs> yeah. uh, me and Barry used to work together at B and Q in Dagenham. Carry on, Emily Bronte. I'm well enough. <laughs> at first, I wasn't that interested, but then I decided I needed some help in the bathroom department. That's not a euphemism. <laughs> anyway, they sent Barry over. He was brilliant. Really helped me out in a tight spot. That's not either. <laughs> I soon saw what an honest, decent, hard-working bloke he was. How long were you together? Not long. He got sat for nicking a claw hammer. <laughs> Is it really 70%? Yes. And if an innocent man hadn't been condemned, we'd still be together now. How do you know he was innocent? Because I nicked it. <laughs> oh, he's a beautiful man, Barry. Had a unique knowledge of the sanderson Uben system. <laughs> All right, that one was a euphemism. <laughs> Thanks for helping me with this speech, Tim. I'm absolutely snowed under at the moment. That's OK. What are big brothers for? Crying to Mum that I broke a scale electric set. Yeah, right, leave it out. That was months ago. 
Sorry for spoiling your day out, Daisy. Oh, it was only the aquarium. I don't really like it anyway. I don't think fish should be kept in cages. <laughs> right, done it. Let's hear it then. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what's going through your minds. You're looking at me thinking, who's this silly little girl who clearly hasn't got the financial backup or indeed the brain power to compete in this competitive world of headhunting? <laughs> But I tell you what I have got. Something that puts me ahead of you bigger companies. And do you know what that something is? I'm cheap. Oh, God. <laughs> Barbara, be a love and get me that bottle of Semillon from the fridge. Oh, no, you don't need alcohol. What you need is a lovely massage from your auntie Barbara. Yeah, I reckon the thought of Barbara rubbing me down would eradicate any thought of a Semillon. <laughs> Thank you. Lucy, I've been thinking. I don't really like seeing you with so much on. I mean work. <laughs> so I thought, maybe, I could be your PA. You? Yeah. I could help you with all sorts of things, like that speech. What do you know about speeches? I know they have to be funny, for a start. <laughs> I did a best man speech once. Started off by having a friendly dig at the Master of Ceremonies. After that, they're eating out the palm of my hand. What did you say? I said, that's an interesting face. What do you do for a hobby? Step on rakes. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Were you there, Tim? Oh, I was there, all right. <laughs> Were you the master? Yes. <laughs> I might use that. Here's another one you can have. I said to this bloke, where are you from? He said, Southampton. I said, sorry. He said, Southampton. I said, no, I heard you. I'm just sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, but you were lucky with that one, because what if he hadn't have said Southampton? <laughs> Here's another one you can have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, to give you some insight into how nervous I've been about this speech, this is the fifth time today I've risen from a warm seat with a piece of paper in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you could do uh, the one about the horse with the long face. You know, when, when his face is long because he's a horse, it's not because he's sad or anything. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Thanks for helping me with all this, Lee. It's great stuff. See? I could be quite helpful if you gave me the chance. Oh, go on. Let him be your PA. What have you got to lose? You weren't sure about me either before you hired me. Shush, Barbara. <laughs> OK, you're on a one-week trial. You won't regret this. I will bring dedication, effort and efficiency to this job. Now, that's a good one. Get that one down. <laughs> I will prove to you that I'm the best PA since... It was a really good PA. <laughs> oh, um. Oh, what's his name? Uh, from the A-team. P.A. Uh, Caracas. Good morning, Miss Adams. <laughs> OK, just to brief you, you've got a nine o'clock with Mr Harashitsky. And then an 11.30 brunch with Mr Clackety Flaps. And then it's straight in the roller for a conference call with Geoffrey Two Tits. <laughs> Oh, yes, and don't forget, it's your husband's birthday today. Shall I book you a table? Or are we going to be tied up this evening? Why are you dressed like that? Like what? Like an uncle who's up on charges. <laughs> I thought it was good to make an effort. First impressions are everything. I already know you. My first impression of you was over a year ago. And believe me, no suit is ever going to raise the memory of that. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with eating sugar puffs in your speedos. <laughs> anyway, not your first impressions, your clients. You're not meeting the clients. So what am I going to be doing? Well, to start, you can make me a cup of tea. Make you a cup of tea? Yeah, it's not a problem, is it? But it's a problem if you're telling me to make you one. You can't really pretend I'm making you one just to be nice. If you like. Well, go on, then. I haven't offered yet. <laughs> well, can you hurry up? I've got other things I want you to pretend you want to do. <laughs> I'm also doing a bit of a mail shot, so I need you to put these letters into these envelopes and put a stamp on each one. Well? I'm making you a cup of tea. <laughs> Have you heard of multitasking? It's like when you're watching television and you're playing with your tackle. You want me to make you a cup of tea and play with my tackle? <laughs> I really am overdressed, aren't I? I should have come in a boiler suit with little black arrows on it. <laughs>
So who are these people we're meeting? We? You're staying in the car. Don't worry, I'll leave the window open. <laughs> They're potential new clients from a company that makes blackcurrant juice. I really hope it comes off. The deal, not the blackcurrant juice. <laughs> I'm tired of being such a small operation. That's why I need this speech to go well tomorrow. God, it's making me feel sick. It's the chicken and egg thing, isn't it? I think it wasn't cooked properly. I mean, if you're perceived as a small business with no staff, you'll always struggle to get new clients. That's why you should be taking your PA into this lunch meeting. It's all about image. Wow. I never thought I'd be taking advice on image from a man who wears slippers in the street. It's called Ugg boots, actually. <laughs> they make you look like you've got dementia. Well? OK, you can come into this meeting, but please, please, what? Well, you know that expression, just be yourself? Yeah. Well, don't. <laughs> We've been let down so many times by our current recruitment agency, we thought it was time we sniffed around, as they say. Oh, well, sniff away. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my PA. I told John to wait in the high street. Here's John. <laughs> Your driver. Oh, sorry. John. I thought you said Keith. <laughs> Basically, Lucy, we're an expanding business and we need lots and lots of roles filling. So catering people, then? <laughs> Mainly marketing. Right. Oh, that reminds me. Brian phoned an hour ago. Brian? Yeah, marketing Brian, putting his feelers out for a new position. He's a massive fan of blackcurrants. <laughs> and what kind of salary would he be looking for? Um... Fifteen. Is that all? That's a month. <laughs> That's quite a lot. Well, he's the best. Wasn't well, easy poaching a man like that away from Ribena. <laughs> he was on a good deal. And he got a good discount on the damaged cartons. Actually, Lee, could you just pop back? I've left my phone at the office. The f office is miles away. Please, it's really important. OK. It won't be long. I'll zoom back in the car. Oh, you don't need these. John the driver's got his own set. Actually, it might be a bit longer. Those arses don't photocopy themselves. Are you sure you won't have just one more? Oh, I'm fine. I'm driving. Not the car, obviously. That's John's job. I mean, I'm playing golf. What do you play off? Grass. <laughs> you OK? Yeah. I told you not to get John that convertible. <laughs> What's that smell? What smell? Like a wet sheep. It's my Ugg boots. <laughs> Listen, Lucy, we need to wrap things up here, but just so you know, we've been very impressed with your pitch today. In fact, we'd be keen to meet up again and hear some more about what you have to offer. Oh, great. Hey, why not tomorrow? Lucy's making a big speech all about her company. You should come and hear it. Oh, Lee, sometimes I wish a great big hole would just open up and then it does, and it's your mouth. <laughs> OK, it's a date. You'll love it. Best thing I've heard since I have a dream. Wow, as good as Martin Luther King, hey? I meant Abba. <laughs> it's good that they're coming to see you make this speech. It'll help you get the contract. It's not your job to make that sort of decision. You're just the PA. Oh, maybe if we all just close our eyes and really, really use our imagination, we can pretend I'm a human being. If I had that sort of imagination, I'd be the next Terry Pratchett. <laughs> Forget it. Just make me a cup of tea. No. Sorry? It's not my job to make cups of tea. A PA's supposed to do stuff like take dictation. OK, fair enough. You ready? Dearly, make me a cup of tea or you're sacked. <laughs> well, maybe you're too late, cos maybe I'm resigning. And good luck with your speech, cos you'll be writing that on your own. Fine. I'm more than capable of coming up with my own witty and intelligent remarks, you... knob. <laughs> You'll be hearing from my solicitor. This is unfair dismissal. I thought you were resigning. Well, I retract my resignation. It's already been accepted. Get lost. Give me my job back, then sack me, otherwise I'm suing. <laughs> For what? For sexual harassment in the workplace. I've seen you ogling me when I'm working. Don't be ridiculous. Working? Oh, 
know what this is about. It's about you having to take orders from a lady. Don't be ridiculous. Lady. <laughs> That's it, isn't it? No, it's not. That's like saying I won't take orders from Hitler because I don't like his moustache. Oh, I see. You won't take orders from me because you think I'm like Hitler? No, I won't take orders from you because I don't like your moustache. <laughs> Thanks for helping me with this speech. Again. That's all right. I'm used to being second choice. Ask Dad. Oh, Tim, he doesn't like me more. Of course he does. He used to watch you playing football and refer to you as the son he never had. <laughs> I used to just stand there hoping that one day he'd say I was good at something. But it never happened. Not even when I won that synchronised skipping rosette. <laughs> I've always been let down in Dad's eyes. Well, I hope you're getting all this down. It's a real feel-good opener. <laughs> Don't worry, I've taken on board what you wanted. I've thrown in a few funnies. Well, go on then. Barbara, stop what you're doing. You might want to listen to this. A lot of people say to me, Lucy, how did you get involved in headhunting? I say it's all to do with my education. When that went wrong, I ended up in headhunting. Because <laughs> they're expecting Lucy to say her education was good. But actually, those flowers are wilting, you know. Well, they weren't before you started that joke. <laughs> Not as good as Lee's ideas, then. Look, Lee's stuff's just a bit more... edgy. I can do edgy. Look at the speech I did at Mum's birthday. Tim, you started by making a safety announcement about fire exits. But there are a lot of candles on that cake. <laughs> All right, how about this for edgy? A lot of people say to me, how did you get involved in headhunting? I say it was either that or start smoking a bloody crack pipe, you bunch of muppets. <laughs> so you got sacked, then? I didn't get sacked, I resigned. Fetch this, fetch that. She treated me like a dog. Why don't you just sit down with her and sort it out? Cos I'm not allowed on the sofa. <laughs> you know, after Barry, there was this other fella at B&Q. You got through a few, didn't you? Did they come flat-packed? <laughs> Jimmy, he was the forklift truck driver at the warehouse. He got sacked as well. Why? What did you steal this time? <laughs> Nothing, actually, apart from his heart. And some shelving brackets. <laughs> But he didn't give up like Barry. And if he hadn't fought for his job back, we wouldn't have had that glorious summer making love in R14 of fencing and corrugated roofing. <laughs> Lucy, can I have a word? In private. Do you mind? Sure. If you need me, I'll have my head in the oven. It's only going to be for a couple of minutes. All right, I'll use the microwave. <laughs> well? I wanted to say sorry about yesterday. What for? Saying I was a member of the Nazi youth? I never said youth. Don't push it. <laughs> for inviting those women to the conference. But I only did it because I know you're going to make a great speech. Can I have my job back? Please? OK. <laughs> only if you start doing what I say and stop arguing with me. You can have one final chance. You're on a yellow card. Get another one and you're off. Actually, if you got a yellow card on a different day, you wouldn't be off. It's only if you get them on the same day, so technically speaking... <laughs> oh, referee! It's a dry cleaning ticket. I need you to pick up my dress for the big speech. I'm on the case. I could have picked up your dry cleaning. Why don't you go with him? Keep an eye on him. Don't patronise me, Lucy. I'm not a child. Do you want to go or not? OK, but I'm holding the ticket. <laughs> Check they've cleaned it properly. Did your mum ever tell you it was rude to grab? <laughs> no. Did your mum ever tell you who your real father was? <laughs> Mr Snatchy. Oh, yeah. Who was he? An Italian waiter? Give it back. It's my responsibility. I'm her brother. It's my responsibility. I'm her PA. It's my responsibility. It's my responsibility. <laughs> there you go. That's your responsibility. <laughs> You look nice. Yeah. Why don't you go like that? <laughs> Where's my dress? Tim's got it. <laughs> oh, look, he's got a little bit of... What the hell have you been doing this time, you cretin? I've got to leave in half an hour. This is the only really nice dress I own. I know. That's why I used my initiative and bought you a new one. You bought it, did you? 
Yeah, all right. Just cos you've got a Dorothy Perkins loyalty card. <laughs> Who chose that? Him. <laughs> all right, me. Oh, God, not the piano wire. <laughs> oh, my God. It's actually OK. In fact, it's more than OK. It's nicer than the other one. So what's with the face? Sorry, my brain can't work out what the biggest emotion is, pleasure or shock. This is giving Lee an image of the last time he had sex. <laughs> yes, I love it. Well, there's that image gone. <laughs> oh, my God, it fits as well. Oh, this is perfect, thanks. You uh, can't see anything, can you? Under the dress. How do you mean? It's just that it's a bit clingy, so, you know. What? I've had to go commando. You've got a knife under there. <laughs> Think Sharon Stone in Basic Instinct? An ice pick? I've got no underwear on. <laughs> Excuse me, mate, are these your eyeballs? I found them in my sister's cleavage. Hey, put them back where you found them. <laughs> Don't forget your speech. Thanks for helping me with this. It's great. It's all right. You can repay me with a Christmas boner. Bonus! <laughs> well done, nervous. Hey, I know. Why don't I come with you? A bit of brotherly support. Yeah. When you're going down in flames, you can look at Tim and know your life's not so bad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> OK, why not? And what about your speechwriter? I'm sure Oscar Wilde was invited to the premiere of Stuff He Wrote. <laughs> or I could stay here and go through your potential client list, use my charms to set up some new deals. Get your jacket, you're coming too. OK. <laughs> I'm wearing pants, is that OK? <laughs> no one can deny it's been a very successful few years for our industry. In fact, if you were to take the turnover from all our members and, allowing for inflation, turn it into a straightforward profit and loss graph since 2004, it would show one simple thing. What? Well, really you haven't got a girlfriend? <laughs> oh, come on. What kind of boring old tough spot wants to listen to a speech about graphs and inflation? Stop it! I was just saying, what kind of boring... Hang on, this is interesting. <laughs> No industry can sustain itself without bringing in new blood. And tonight, I'm delighted to be able to introduce to you one of these new kids on the block. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucy Adams. Thank you. And thank you, Peter McMillan, our chairman and host. You know, looking at Peter, it begs the question, doesn't it? What do you do for a hobby? Step on rakes? <laughs> so, hello. Let's meet the crowd. Where are you from, sir? Bristol. Pardon? Bristol. No, I heard you. I'm just... Pardon. You have to excuse me, I'm actually a bit nervous. Um, I mean to give you some insight into how nervous I've been about the speech. This is the fifth time tonight I've been to the toilet. I mean, risen from the toilet. Anyway, the point is, I've been absolutely shitting myself. <laughs> oh. Well, this isn't exactly going to plan, is it? In fact, you're probably thinking, who is this silly little girl? Well, let me tell you. This silly little girl has got something that puts me ahead of you bigger companies. And do you know what that something is? I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people ask me how I ever got involved in headhunting. Well, I'll tell you. It was all to do with my education. When that went wrong, I ended up in headhunting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
you. <laughs> You're too kind. What? Sweet Fanny Adams. Did you hear about the horse with the long face? What a day. Yeah. I've said it all now. <laughs> Still, could have been worse. At least you didn't start firing ping pong balls into the crowd. <laughs> so what did your black current women have to say? They thought I'd done it deliberately for effect. They said I had balls. <laughs> Maybe I didn't say it all. So did you get the contract? Yes, no thanks to you. Still, at least we've all learnt a lesson. And what's that? You've learnt never to employ your flatmate again. I've learnt I'm not cut out to be a PA. And Tim's learnt a new word. Brazilian. <laughs> Fancy a cup of tea? OK, why not? Make it yourself. <laughs> yeah, not going out, not staying in. Hanging around with my head in a spin But there is no need to scream and shout We're not going out We are not going out 